Swallowtail kites are an incredibly charismatic bird. They're one that a lot of people care a whole lot about. They are a social raptor. They tend to nest in small neighborhoods or small groups. That's really a unique trait. But the fact that they are social raptors also makes them more vulnerable. Anytime we have a lot of a population in one place, we have a higher risk of losing a larger proportion of that population. The swallowtail kite is an iconic bird for Waccamaw Refuge, so it was one of the, the focal species in the planning of the refuge. And so we've really thought a lot about the swallowtail kite and our planning for the future of the refuge as well. So my background is actually in avian ecology. I studied birds for a master's and a PhD. And through about a decade of working in, in the university system, I realized that what birds need most is habitat conservation. I'm a project director for the Nature Conservancy. And I've been working closely with Waccamaw National Wildlife Refuge and with Craig. One of our main objectives is to manage for old growth forested wetlands. Those are really important because the crown canopies and the crowns of these trees are really important for kites for nesting and then a lot of the just structure of that forest is important for kites. But one of the things that we're learning is that the models are telling us that the areas that we conserve for old growth forested wetlands could be open brackish marsh in 50 years. The southern end of the refuge really is a place that's vulnerable to salinity intrusion. And we know from some of our great partners' work is that when we have the convergence of certain conditions, when we see drought compounded by high tidal amplitude and we add upon that sea level rise, we really see a lot of salt moving into the system. And so we've started to see some habitat transitions in places that kites use. So once we kind of realized what a lot of this means to the habitat that we've protected, we had a whole new challenge to try to come back and look at where things will be 50 years from now. Probably the most important places for us to protect are places where we already know where kites are, but it's outside of that immediate path of habitat transition. So those are the places that we're thinking about for the Waccamaw Refuge expansion. Where are some places that in 50 or 100 years we're still going to have tidal freshwater wetlands that we can protect for, for swallowtail kites? And if those are places the kites are already using, that's a good indicator that that's where they're going to be in the future as well.